Welcome back to Temporary Mail. If you have not watched our last video on the Chiapas conflict the untold truth of the Zapatista uprising, check the top link in the description for more. Enjoy the video. Rafael Guilán Vicente, also known as Subcomandante Marcos, was born on June 19, 1957 in Tampico, Mexico. He was a Mexican professor who was the leader of the Zapatista National Liberation Army, also known as ESLM, which launched a rebellion in 1994 in the state of Chiapas and later functioned as a political movement defending the rights of Mexico's indigenous people. Marcos's leadership of the ESLM made him an international rebel icon, and he also became a widely read author not only of political writings, but also of novels and poetry. Like many people of his generation, Marcos was affected by the Tlatelolco massacre in 1968 and joined a Maoist organization, later joining Zapatismo. Origins Rafael Guidan Vicente was the Jesuit-trained son of the owner of a furniture chain in Tampico, Mexico. After attending school in Tampico and Monterrey, Guilin earned two degrees from the National Autonomous University of Mexico, UNAM. In 1981, he was one of five students from the university's Department of Philosophy and Letters to receive a National Medal of Excellence from President José López Portillo. He taught aesthetics part-time at a working-class school known as a left-wing activist center before resigning in 1984. It is believed that soon afterward, Guilin moved to the mountains of Chiapas to work with Mayan peasants. Subcomandante Marcos made his first appearance on New Year's Day 1994 when he led an Ezlan offensive in which the Zapatistas seized several towns in southern Chiapas state. As the rebellion continued, Marcos, one of the Ezlan's few non-Indian fighters, became known for his trademark black mask pipe and for his communiques, issued in the name of the Revolutionary Indigenous Clandestine Committee of the General Command of the Ezlan. These letters to the Mexican people, which appeared in newspapers and on the internet, often combined humor, poetry, and storytelling with sharp political critiques. The next day, the rebels had already captured former Governor Castellanos Dominguez and proceeded to hold him hostage due to their own tribunal, finding him guilty of anti-indigenous crimes and corruption, and sentenced him to forced labor. By January 3rd, the Ezlan had lost over 50 of its soldiers and over 100 civilians had been killed but had withdrawn from San Cristobal de las Casas as they could not maintain their grip on it. They had also liberated a government prison with about 180 inmates. Marcos V. Zadillo On February 9, 1995, President Zadillo ordered thousands of Mexican troops into the areas held by the Ezlan. The stated purpose of the crackdown was to prevent further violence by capturing Zapatista leaders, in particular Marcos. As part of the effort, Zadillo identified Marcos as Guilin, calling him a middle-class maverick philosopher and university professor. Zadillo attempted to discredit Marcos as the voice of the peasant, led Ezlan and to strip him of the charismatic guerrilla mystique that had captured the imagination of many. Pictures of Guilin juxtaposed with those of the masked Marcos appeared worldwide. Meanwhile, as Marcos, the Ezlan, and the population of many villages fled into the Lacandon jungle, more than 100,000 demonstrators in Mexico City and elsewhere answered Zadillo by proclaiming, We are all Marcos. While Zadillo proclaimed Marcos a terrorist, the UNAM awarded him an honorary degree. By mid-March of 1995, the troops had been pulled out of the area. Marcos continued to communicate via the internet in the rainforest. In October, he emerged to participate in peace talks with the Mexican government in San Andres Lorenzar, doing so with his usual dramatic flair. On horseback with armed, masked Zapatistas to the sounds of conch shells blowing and a cheering crowd of peasants. Talks between the Ezel and the government continued into February 1996, when both parties signed what became known as the San Andreas Accords, which outlined a program of land reform, indigenous autonomy, and cultural rights. In December of that year, however, President Zadillo rejected the accords. As clashes continued in Chiapas between Zapatistas and paramilitary forces in the 1990s, Marcos began to appear at political events and rallies where he spoke on topics including human rights, international politics, and the Mayan peasant culture. His mantras against neoliberalism, policies promoting free market trade, and globalization were popular with the world's leftist groups. The 2000s in 2001, Marcos emerged from the jungle for the first time in years to lead a 15-day march from Chiapas to Mexico City. 
The feat, which became known as Zapatur, was meant to advocate political rights for the country's indigenous population. In Mexico City, he spoke in the main city plaza, the Zocalo, before hundreds of thousands of people, including several prominent politicians and celebrities. Immediately afterward, he appeared before members of Congress to lobby for the implementation of the San Andres Accord. On April 25, Congress approved a revised version of the Accords, which the Zapatistas denounced. Marcos appeared again on January 1, 2006, this time under his new name, Delegate Zero, to embark on an Ezel initiative known as the Other Campaign, in which he led the Zapatistas on a six-month countrywide tour, coinciding with the 2006 Mexican presidential race. Delegate Zero aimed to form a movement among other indigenous and resistance groups in the country and to create change outside the scope of electoral politics. On the road, Delegate Zero verbally criticized the presidential candidates of Mexico's major political parties. After the election, Marcos sporadically emerged from hiding to make statements. Marcos has never officially confirmed or denied being Guilin. If you enjoyed our video on Subcomandante Marcos of the Zapatista movement, Make sure to hit like and subscribe to catch up on our daily uploads of unspoken truths behind shocking historic events, narco sagas, wars, and more.